Welcome to the Legends of Iron. I'm John Anderson. Meet my co-host, Nick Best, and Aki Williams. We're going to have some amazing guests on the show. Buckle up tight, because we're going to be talking about the shit you're not supposed to be talking about. We're going to be discussing anything and everything it takes to become a legend of iron. Legends of Iron is brought to you by Muscle Mets. Muscle Mets is the creator of Carnivore Pure Beef Protein Isolates. Beef builds muscle and Carnivore is the world's number one selling beef protein. Welcome to another edition of Legends of Iron. I am John Anderson with me always my partners in crime. Hakeem Williams and Nick Best. Unfortunately, Nick is not here yet, but we're hoping he drops in on the show. We have got a killer episode for you. We've got one of the top bodybuilders on the planet here. He's been lifting since he was a little guy. Bodybuilding is in his blood. He used to train with his dad. His dad is also an old school bodybuilder, which is a lot of his roots. Now one of the top contenders in the planet, hands down, but more importantly, one of the nicest people you will ever meet, John De La Rosa. Welcome to the show, my brother. Thank you, guys. Welcome. welcome. It's good to be on here with you guys and, you know, getting back into it. I, I took a little hiatus to build some businesses. <laughs> well, thank God. Uh-huh. But um, I've been training hard and I cannot wait for this new season coming up, man. That's nice. great, brother. I, I, I see a few of your videos training, man. It's glad to see you back in the gym, man. <clears throat> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you know, it took I, I, I think as we get older, right, uh, uh-huh. we start to think about our futures a little bit more. And, you know, I, I was coming to a point in my career and in my life personally that I needed to, I mean, I came, you know, I've always been business minded and I wanted to step away and make sure that I secure fi- myself financially for my future outside of bodybuilding. Gotcha. Um, yeah, especially with the, yeah, especially with the times that we're in now with, with this whole COVID thing. And, yeah, you know, it's, be, it's becoming more and more difficult to make money through this industry. So, mm-hmm. yeah, very true. And, and uh, you know, take care of myself and my family first. That's it. Yeah, That's yeah. it. Well, John, let's go back a little bit. <clears throat> let's go back in time. <clears throat> you were, there's a period in your life where your, your career was literally exploding. Uh, your wife was also at the highest level. You guys had this extremely public relationship. Uh, you had businesses and then, you know, kind of out of left field, you know, life took a turn. And obviously one of the things that I really, uh, the, the viewers, everybody goes through trouble, but to hear how you went through your troubles and you basically took and took that lemon and made some lemonade is going to be really inspiring for our listeners to hear about. So talk to us about that process. How was that? How did you get through it? All that kind of good stuff. Um, I mean, Akeem has been there and, and seen tears and, you know, I'm an emotional guy, a sensitive guy. Uh, doesn't mean that I'm weak. You know, it, it just means that I, I feel a little bit more and it was probably the most difficult time of my life. Um, it just made me question myself as a man, just the way things happen, you know, and I'm not going to mm-hmm. put, too much personal information out there, but it was, it was, a it shook me to my core as a man It it made me question my ability to make decisions for my life, for myself, for my family. It made me question, you know, myself, um, with my career in bodybuilding. Did I make the right choice? Um, for the viewers out there, just kind of, again, it came out of left field. It was totally unexpected on my end as well. Um, so without, direction or an understanding of what happened myself it, you, you start to look at everything and start picking yourself apart which is what I started doing you know was I uh you know was I doing the right thing by by you know putting myself through hell and, and beating myself up and competing mm-hmm. and taking mm-hmm. supplements and you know we all know this is a bit of a selfish sport at times right I, I made the best uh, ability that I could to make time for my wife and my family. I always did, but you start to question, did I do enough? You know, did mm-hmm. I make enough money? Did I provide a good enough life? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all those things. Um, so it was extremely, extremely, extremely difficult so much so that I, I 
I, you know, at this point, four years removed from the situation, I ran from my problems. I moved to Florida. I left my friends and my family, Akeem being one of them. You know, I, I said I needed to pick up and I moved to Florida. Um, and it was the best and worst decision of my life. Uh, it was the best decision because I needed time and space to myself to figure out, you know, exactly how I was going to move forward. When I was mm -hmm. home with my friends and family, although it was an extremely um, nice thing of everyone to care and for everyone to look out for me. And um, it didn't, it didn't allow peace into my life. It was a constant mm -hmm. reminder every day of what I was going through. Yeah. Um, so I decided, you know what, I had enough. And almost on a whim, I moved to Florida. Um, my business partner, Sean Covell and I um, had been trying to open a gym in New York and I told him, look, I'm, I'm not staying in New York. I, I got to go. He had made a suggestion, you know, that I go somewhere that I might enjoy living. And I said, okay, Florida's that place. So <laughs> <laughs> I just figured, you know what? I was yeah, yeah, yeah. Old, <laughs> I was old and, you know, beautiful women in Florida. Why the hell not, you know? Why not, right? <laughs> yeah. So I came out to Florida. And again, it was the best decision at the time because I needed to work things out for myself. But at the same time, it became extremely lonely, um, really sad. I, I hit some really low lows. Um, you know, it made me question again my career as a bodybuilder. I've been, you know, disappointed in myself of not reaching the goals that I wanted to reach. And I allowed some of the things that happened during the divorce and some of the things that were said really, like, mess with me. You know, it made me really question, do I have mm -hmm. the ability? to be one of the best in the world you know mm -hmm. will I ever be one of the best in the world um you know it really 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 messed with me but you know finding yourself alone and dealing mm -hmm. with those things really I found makes you a stronger person you know yeah absolutely uh, you know it, there were some really really dark times and and it really made me <clears throat> look deeper in myself as a man um mm -hmm. what I wanted to accomplish um, and this isn't, you know, the things that I have now or the things that I'm going to have, the things that I'm going to accomplish has nothing to do with anyone proving anyone wrong or making anyone feel bad. It's just, I believe in myself again. Um, yeah, absolutely, brother. I'm confident in myself again. And bodybuilding, truthfully, has always been my foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, for a few years there, I... I Although I was competing, I wasn't quite right. You know, I was still going through some depression. I was still questioning myself. And, um, you know, when you share so many years with someone and, and they know, you know, they know exactly how to get to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they, yeah. they know just the right thing to say. Yeah. You know, I remember going through the divorce. I was called short and bald. And those <laughs> yeah, no, that stuff will cut deep, man. <laughs> yeah, but but you know the thing is that that didn't bother me as much as you'll never be a champion bodybuilder. You yeah. know that yeah, that yeah. really really hurt. Yeah. That really was like man, and it yeah. makes you question yourself. So it has nothing to do with any of that. It's just that that did enough to make me question myself. And now yeah. you know the John that I was before, I think is back tenfold. I'm, I'm much more mentally tough. I'm, I believe in myself much more. Yeah. You know, this, this was process, the, was, this, what you went through, you became back, you became a better version of yourself. You know, when you right. overcome that stuff, you, right. you know, you're not the old John, you're the old John plus. Right. Yeah. And, and there's something to be said about that. I've been doing a lot of spiritual work and, and mm -hmm. you know, mental health stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, there's something to be said about leaving some of that behind. We change as, you know, as we grow older, we hit these milestones in our lives and it's almost like we're shedding an older version of ourselves. Yeah. And, and, you know, becoming this new person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we're carrying this, those experiences, but we're becoming better. Yeah. And I really feel that, you know, I'm in that, that part of my life where, you know, again, I'm just, really confident in what I can do, my abilities, not just on stage, but off stage. You know, I've been able to yeah. build an incredible gym here in Florida with my buddy, Sean. Um, we have, we just hit over 1200 members in three months. 
Oh, wow. wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. Man. That's, yeah. that's Thank amazing. You. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, we're really, really proud of the gym. And that was, you know, something that I needed to, to really, yeah. like, boost my confidence. After that, you know, I, I relaunched my, my clothing brand. I, I merged with another company. So we're going to be dropping some more merch, uh, mm-hmm. you know, just athleisure where we're going to be doing girls stuff, guy stuff all, all over. That's you know. great, brother. That's great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you know, the old John is back better. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you know, brother, the things, it's the hardest things, the things that we think are going to break us, that we work through that make us bigger and better versions of ourselves, you know, and, you know, your story, obviously it was public. So it was, you know, most people go through challenges, you know, whatever they want to call similar, we all have our challenges. So for people to see you go through this on a public level, it's something they can grab a hold of and say, you know what, you know, he did it and it gives them hope that they can do it too, because when it comes down to it, I mean, I'm kind of like you, I'm on the inside, I'm a softy, man. I get emotionally hurt so easily. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it just sounds funny, but it's the truth, man. I'm like, I mean, if we, even my mom says, you're the biggest. John, 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 don't listen to that guy. <laughs> last, 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 last week we were on this podcast, right? Yeah. Do, do, I, do I want to tell him the story? But I'll let you, I'll let you, let's, let's hear you tell your, what you saw. Cause I was the one who did it. So I know what I did. <laughs> last, last week we yeah. had this podcast. Yeah. What's his name again? What's... Tony oh, Huge. Tony, Tony Huge. Huge. Oh, Last week okay. we on the, we're on this podcast with Tony Huge, right? Yeah. And Tony Huge is, is dropping a lot of gems. You know, he's saying a lot of knowledgeable stuff. You know, he's a very intelligent guy. Yeah. You know, letting him speak. All of a sudden, he finished talking. This guy pulls out a bottle. Bottle full of piss. He <laughs> to pee, and he didn't want to interrupt Tony to go use the bathroom. I was so sensitive. I was so nice and so sensitive. I didn't want to stop him from talking. <laughs> so let me, so let me get this straight. Just because I pissed in a bottle, just because I pissed in a bottle means I can't be sensitive. Is that how it works? <laughs> yeah, the, you know the the thing with the divorce. It was it was extremely public, like you said, and and that yeah. was probably that the probably thing, made it the oh hardest God. thing. It's oh. like. I remember I was in Germany maybe like eight months after um, and people were still coming up to me like, Hey, what happened? And mm-hmm. it, it, it happened for almost two, three years. People kept coming up and asking and asking and asking. And it's that probably made it, that probably prolonged where I'm at now. Um, but again, I mean, not to get like overly religious or spiritual, but you know, God gives his toughest battles to his strongest. Absolutely. So, he doesn't give true. he gives you what you can take, even though you don't believe it sometimes. That's exactly now, now, right. Let me let me ask you a question. Do you think it was a mistake making your relationship so public? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um and that that got to add a ton of pressure, brother. A ton of pressure. Yes. It, you know, at the time, it the, you know, my my ex-wife and I were we didn't even expected i mean you mm-hmm. you akeem you were you were right there alongside of us i mean yeah, our, yeah. our careers just blew up it exploded yeah. right side yeah. by side yeah and it, and it was like you know i was doing well on stage she was doing well on stage we we're getting a yeah. ton of promotion and it wasn't something that we wanted to happen it just happened yeah, um, yeah. looking back at it i wish we would have managed that a little bit better but yeah you know we saw it as an opportunity we had mm-hmm. great success. I was able to open a store. I mean, I yeah. traveled a ton. I was able to do a lot. So, in yeah. hindsight, I wasn't really, you know, aware of the damage that it was causing or the damage that it may cause later on down yeah. the road. Yeah, you know, but it, up the I, pressure, man. Yeah, in hindsight, things are twenty twenty. So, yeah, I would have I would have done a million things different. But at the same time, yeah, you know, again, I think the experiences that I shared. Mm-hmm. In those nine years with that person, where I would never change it, mm-hmm. um, you know, the love that I developed for that person will never go. It, it, it's just, and it, that's a strong person to admit that too. I mean, yeah, it, a it, lot it, of people but, will cover but, that emotion but, up with saying, "Oh, you know, forget this, forget that." You're still true to what you felt and what you feel, and that's a strong person right there. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is like, of course, I went through my resentment and my anger and, you know, yeah. I went through all of those stages. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but at the end of the day, like I spent nine years with somebody who I, I grew up with, you know, and, yeah. and, and I grew up with in front of what seemed like the world. Yeah. yeah. So Pretty did, much was. Yeah. I mean, we, we did some incredible things. Her and I saw the world together. We did some awesome stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So those experiences will never change. And my feelings for yeah. them will never change. Um, but I do believe that it was the best thing for both of us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I it was. I think it was at the Arnold. I can't remember what year it was, <clears throat> but we ended up uh, a few a few stations apart, taking a piss in the in the, in the, the bathroom, and we had a quick conversation. Hey, what's going on, brother? Because we obviously met with yeah. both being with MHP, yeah. but then since us go going our own directions, and but we still see each other at expos, and we're sitting there conversing real quick, and you're like, you just told me, said, man. I just had to get out of there. He said it was like every every place I went in New York, somebody else was asking me what happened, and you got to relive that. And yeah. to get some place where you can actually start to develop in terms of your own healing yeah. is going to be. If you're asked that question every day, it's very hard to to make forward steps. So yeah. when you told me that, I remember thinking, "Good for you," because you needed to do what was best for you, and that's what you did. And now look yeah. at you, you're yeah, bigger, yeah. yeah. Listen, he only moved to Florida because he was tired of the snow in New York. He got tired of shoveling snow, and he wanted to run away. <laughs> <laughs> that had a lot to do with it. That's for sure. Wow. You, you can't. You that can't. Shut up. In my list. <laughs> Negatives. That was definitely on the negative list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you you, you can't, can't shovel. Man, there, forget, you can't shovel sunshine, snow, man. man. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't <laughs> shovel sunshine. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, I've always been a West Coast guy, and I don't mind visiting the East Coast, but I never understood why you all you stayed over there with a snow shovel in your hand. I never got that. It's like, uh, shit. You know it's- After living in Florida the last four years, again, I had some really dark times here and had nothing to do with waking up in the sun. It was yeah. more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I tell, you, I tell you what, you know, uh-huh. more times than not, you know, when I found myself in my home by myself and I want to blow my brains out because my brain just kept like, replaying all of that shit yep. getting out in the sun was probably the best thing i could do i would go for a walk you know and just yeah. kind of breathe in vitamin d through. baby yeah and i mean i listen i don't know if there's any truth to this i know that it's been said but i just feel better waking up in a beautiful place you know like yeah. i can walk outside and it's like I'm in a tropical paradise in my own well, backyard. Brother, the what? bottom line is you can't argue someone's opinion, and that's your opinion. And if that's what you feel, then nobody can argue that. Whether that's it's nice. a fact or not, it works for you and good for you. Oh, it's that simple. I started, <laughs> I started to develop a routine. You know, I, I got up and I, uh, I started to read. Um, I would take, you know, I, I developed really bad sleeping habits through my depression and all the shit that I was going through. Mm-hmm. You know, I would, I, I developed IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. I, I, my sleeping habits are terrible. There was a lot going on, you know, with all the stress and anxiety of it all. Yeah. So I, I remember listening to a really good um, podcast with Jordan B. Peterson. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar. Um, and he said, you know, getting up and creating some kind of routine for yourself again um, yeah. In the midst of all this chaos will help you organize your thoughts. And I said, you know what, let me give it a shot. Mm-hmm. So I started reading a, a book called The Daily Stoic, um, which you just get up. It's a, it's a small excerpt. You read a little bit of it. And every day is a new excerpt. You know, just getting your mind into a positive headspace. And then I would go for a walk. I would do my cardio and start thinking, okay, I'm going to go train at this time. I got these meals. I got my clients I got to meet. And, you know, so on and so yeah. forth. And that, that helped out tremendously as well. Nice. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, I'm a big believer in that brother. I mean, I've, I, every, like, I, I know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow before I go to bed tonight, because yeah. then I wake up <laughs> and my, my brain, I don't have to think I execute. I plan Just today go. for tomorrow, right. you know, right. and for me, I mean, I'll tell you, we've all got plenty of things, obstacles we've overcome. And the, one of the ways that I overcome, you know, my, some of my challenges was to always be planned because you mm-hmm. take me, out of a planned moment and I start kind of just, I'm turning to fucking rain man and I'm off in the fucking corner rocking, saying weird shit, you know, (laughs) but if, but if I know where I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm good. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I can't tell you. I mean, that that plan, you know, having a routine, yeah. I would I wouldn't be able to exist without a routine. So yeah. I totally yeah. understand where you're coming from there, brother. Another another cool thing that came of all of this too, I was able to, you know, I was in touch with the organization called Builder Brotherhood. And uh, it was a, it's an organization based out of Australia. This lady reached out to me, her brother had uh, unfortunately committed suicide and she had somehow heard of my story. And one, one thing led to another. And, and, and I started talking to guys from this organization that were going through a similar, you know, going through divorce or depression or whatever. And I was helping these guys like out of their own, you know, shit. Wow. And it, it yeah. ended up being yeah. really, like, for me, it ended up being really fulfilling, you know, I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. And I still, I think I got a, a, a DM maybe two weeks ago of a guy going mm-hmm. through divorce and he was like, Hey man, I, I really need help. Like, how did you go through it? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, that's so, amazing. You yeah. Know? You know, like I always, I say this all the time and, and again, it sounds probably cheesy, mm-hmm. but Man, God has blessed me, dude. Like, I was this poor kid from Dominican Republic, and I've traveled the world. I'm on a podcast with some awesome bodybuilders, you know, and, and I've had the opportunity to help people. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, if, God, if anything, I can feel good that I've done something good with the platform that I've been provided with, you know, yeah. all through what? Because I lived, because I fell in love wow. with you know I mean, what I mean, like, for me, I was just telling my girl earlier. And this is no bullshit. I'll have her scream. Just early, I was like, how fucking crazy is this that I like, I can't. Yeah, look, look what you've done, you know? Yeah, look, like, how crazy. Like, <laughs> I, I remember I remember being like eight, nine years old, like opening magazines yeah. and telling my dad, like, I'm going to be one of the best. I'm going to, and I, you know, even though I haven't reached anywhere near where I want to be. No, brother, I, you're I, one of the I, best. I think brother. I let's, think I think you don't give yourself enough credit. Yeah, yeah. Let's I was clear the start, air. I was gonna, yeah. Let's. I was gonna make one point to you. I, I, I noticed you said something very interesting. That you something that hurt you. Even though somebody like your pat, your ex called you bald and short. That didn't hurt you as much as no. when she said you wasn't a champion bodybuilder. <laughs> yeah. And you yeah. let you let that affect you, even though you know it's not true. Yeah. Well, you know, I you mean, know, that's you, the thing. You know, we always have our own perspective of things. We never see. Yeah. Yeah. Akeem, yes. how, how, how many years did I say, God damn, Akeem, you're getting so fucking big. And yeah. you were like, really? No, no, no. We don't yeah. ever see ourselves yeah. in the same light that other people see us. So, like, yeah. I started to think maybe, maybe I'm not. Maybe I have mm-hmm. this perception of myself that I am good and I'm not. Mm-hmm. You well, know, you know, yeah. when someone that that you that, that you really love says something that's oh. hurtful, it's hard to fuck. I mean, that crushes me. Oh, I mean, I, I'll be the first guy to go find a, a quiet place and have a good cry because that emotion spools up so fucking fast, and I got to get yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. You know, for I, me, it was yeah. like it just really made me like question every again. It made me that really bothered me because mm-hmm. again, I I felt like <sighs> this was something that again since I was a kid. Yeah. How many kids grow up wanting to be a baseball player and it actually happens? Yeah, very few. There's, not, there's, there's very few. Same thing with any other sport. Like, yeah, I remember that, visiting my dad that. while he was in prison and showing him these books. And, you know, we would we would sit there and he would say, yeah, this is this is Flex Wheeler. Like, look how awesome he is. I'm like, I'm going to be that. I'm going to be one of these guys. And I'm actually doing it. But when somebody, like you said, John, you know, knows exactly how to get to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She did, and and it fucked up oh, my whole world. Oh, it you're you're, you're totally distorted perspective of yourself after that. One hundred percent. I'm totally with you. I get that. I've, I, I, and I'll tell you, brother. When I found out you were coming on the show, I was like, first thing that came to my mind is you've already inspired so many people, and just the, you know, in, in terms of the bodybuilding world, but yeah. actually sharing your story with this, this is going to touch a hundred times more people because you know so many people go through this stuff and they need they need to relate to somebody who's also done it and the fact that your relationship was public you know so many people were able to see what happened and to for you telling your story and you coming through the end of this and explaining 
how you're a bigger, better version of yourself. And I don't mean physically, I'm talking mentally and spiritually. This is going to be the power of this show because I mean, you're going to inspire so many, just like you're doing with the DMs you explained, but now we're going to reach uh, it's I'm just, I'm so excited that you're sharing this with everybody because it is really inspiring. And so many people need to know that it's okay. You have to go through these channels to get better. Yeah. You know, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I, I just, uh, I feel like it's important for me to be honest with. Yes. Look at, you know, I'm a 270 pound guy. It's not easy to sit in front of a camera that's being recorded. <laughs> and knowing, it, knowing it's going to be put out there saying, yeah, I cried like a fucking baby, you know, for months, yeah. you know, yeah. but, but you know what? There might be a guy out there that's dealing with the same shit. And yeah. if he doesn't know like, Hey, this is normal. It's okay to feel it's okay to be broken. It's yeah. okay to, you know, um, then yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm doing what God has blessed me with a disservice. Yes. I have a platform yeah. with you guys on my own social media to do good. And if I'm not yes. doing good with it, then I'm not doing right. Yeah. I want to do right. Yeah. And I want to do good. So yeah. that's where it yeah. all comes from, man. Yeah. And brother, I mean, you're, you're the epitome of a big, strong man. And then to also talk about the fact that, hey, on an emotional basis, when I was hurting, yes, I cried. Yes, I had this. Yes, I had depression. And yes, I questioned myself. And yes, I worked through it. And yes, you can too. That's yeah. a tremendous message that we're sending out here. So, brother, really fucking cool shit. You know? Yeah, that, 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 that's very true. Because I, I think, especially when it comes to relationships and stuff like that, as men, we're always taught to hold it in and yeah. not supposed yeah. to show emotion. Yeah. And that's why, you know, a lot of us, you know, a lot of guys develop mental problems and stuff like that. Yes. So, you know, my hat's off has always been off to you. Like I said, you're my brother for life. And, you, you know, you, you needed to move to Florida to heal. And I'm just happy to see you in a better place, you know, doing cool. better. And uh, I definitely know, you know, your, your journey is not done yet. You got oh. a lot more stuff to accomplish. Oh. You know, just you're healthy. started, man. Exactly. You know, <laughs> so yeah, you know, yeah. I Thank look you, forward man. to seeing you on stage again, bro. Thank you, brother. I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna hopefully be catching up to you, but okay, just so just so the viewers out there know, like Akeem and I are very, very close. I remember uh Akeem, you'll remember this story. Um when Akeem found out it was the middle of the night, well, seemed to be the middle of the night for me. I had been up for, you know, maybe two days at that point. It might have been like ten or eleven o'clock, and Akeem drove to my house and just to check on me. He yeah. mind you, Akeem was like how far were you? Like 45 minutes from me, an hour from me at that point? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, just so you guys know, Akeem is, is what he's saying is not for camera. It is 100% no, no. true. He drove to my, I was actually at my parents' house at the time. Um, and he just came, drove there, and Akeem would be the first one to tell you, I just cried. I just sat there yeah. and cried. I had no, no yeah. idea what to do, how to express myself. I just felt broken as a person as a man and and i have incredible friends like akeem who came out and just were there for me that's what i yeah. mean like god has blessed me with these incredible people in my life akeem juan victor marco you know my boys in new york they're they know they're my brothers they're family to me anything they need i'm always there so this isn't like all fluff for the yeah, no, 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 no. 100 true. Yeah, we yeah. keep it pretty raw on the show, brother. Yeah, You're talking yeah. from the heart, frustrated. And, and Akeem you know? is, you know, Akeem knows that. Like those guys, all of those guys, they're 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 family to me, you know. And, and that's never ever bodybuilding aside that that shit yeah. is never going to change. Victor's kids are like, mm -hmm. they're like my kids. I love those kids, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing with Juan and Marco. Mm -hmm. You know, I do whatever I can for whenever I can see them, you know, I, I want to mm -hmm. see them as often as I can. And, you know, that's why I said the move to Florida has been rough because I'm here alone, my entire family and all of my friends are in New York. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, but with the healing, the healing you've gone through, you know, there's going to be a time when you're going to be able to go back there and you're not going to carry any pain around with you. You know, right. you're going to go back there and it's going to be like Holy ground all over again. Oh yeah. And oh yeah. You well, just, you just you just you've been healing to the point where pretty soon it's it's it, there won't be any anything negative there for you and then you'll well, I don't go think, back I think and it'll be past that I, I i don't think there's any negativity again you know what happened happened i think it was the best um i think what i needed most in life is to create some kind of stability some kind of foundation yeah mm -hmm. um, up until recently like i said I mean, 
being completely open and honest with you guys. I was 37 years old. I walked away from a really good career as an elevator mechanic, good benefits, good pay, good everything mm. to chase this bodybuilding career. And I was, I was in an upward trajectory until my divorce for me. Um, after my divorce, I didn't perform nearly as good as I wanted to or as I was trying to, because a lot of people were like, oh, John wasn't in condition. Yeah, motherfucker, I was doing three hours of cardio, like eating barely any food. Like I was trying. But yeah. the thing is, when you're not here. Yeah, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You need to be in your right, the right state yeah. of mind. You got to, you know. So, you know, I, I I really do believe it was the best thing for me to come out here. Yeah. And I, I did find that stability. I found that foundation in creating this gym. And now, you know creating some kind of revenue outside of bodybuilding because again yeah as i was looking back just as early as two years ago when i you know two years ago when i moved here or four years ago but two years after i had moved here i was looking at myself as a 36 year old man like okay well what do i have in life yeah i don't have, I don't have a family i don't yeah. have a wife i don't have kids i don't have a business of my own anymore like bodybuilding was everything and that to me is scary because yeah. A little diversification will let you sleep at night. <laughs> yeah, well, stability, right? Because yeah, we. I mean, frankly speaking, we're all bodybuilders here, and we 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 have made money through this industry. But we all, I mean, all of us here know this is not yeah. a way to survive, right? You, you're not yeah. going to have a good living unless you're one of the top top guys. Um, yeah, you got to source outside of the competition. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've always been a family man. I want to have a family someday. I want to have my own kids and I don't want to see their, I don't want them to see their dad stressing about where he's going to get money from. Yeah. You know, what he's going to do as a 37, 38, 39 year old man. Like you shouldn't be figuring, figuring out your life at 39, yeah. 40 years old. That should already be done. Yeah. Um, well, brother, sounds like your new gym is putting you right in that spot where you want to be. So congratulations, brother. Thank you. That's Thank so you. cool. Yeah. 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 That's really cool, man. Really thank cool. Well, I, I got to say one more time, brother. I just I I just thank you that you came and you were so honest about everything. Because I know this is going to inspire so many people. And that's what you know, that's what the show's about is helping people become the best version of themselves. And that's really cool stuff, brother. Thank you. So, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So shifting gears, tell us a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your experience uh, going over to Oxygen. Talk to us about that. Oxygen was, for me, was a good experience. Um, the guys out there, it, they're extremely passionate about bodybuilding. Um, I went out there for a job. You know, anyone that knows me, Akeem can probably attest to this. He's seen me in these settings. It's business for me. I went out there for my career. It was a job that I needed to get done. Um, these people were willing to help me and push me and train me. And I was, you know, doing two a days. And I mean, they were up my ass every second, you know, and it was okay mm -hmm. for me. Some people don't like that. For me, it was like, I was used to playing team sports where like, you know, I remember doing three a days in football, you know, where mm -hmm. the coaches would come into our tents when we were away in camp and wake us up with a fucking pan and <laughs> I mean, literally within five minutes, I had to get all my shoulder pads on and everything. And then we're sprinting, you know, like I'm OK yeah. with that. Some people are not OK with that. I mean, these guys yeah. were kind of like that. They would knock on your door. Hey, you got to go train. All right. You know, let me get dressed and go. Let's go. So I was out there for a job. My experience was good. They, they fed me well. They flew me out first class. They flew me back home first class. Uh, you know, they trained. They, they pushed me. So my experience was good. I spent a lot of time with Rami. Victor was there for two weeks. Victor could could not stay. He was uh, not happy there. He was uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was not, not a good place. For <laughs> well, that's, that's what that's what Akim was saying. He says, you know, it works great for some, not for others. You know. Yeah, yeah. So like I said, for me, the experience was fine. Um, I got out there for work. That's that's really how I saw it. I made yeah. some great friends while I was there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I know that a lot of people have come back and not had great experiences. And, you know, for me, it was okay. And I, and I, and I was fortunate that Victor was there because he did, Victor looked out for me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm, cool. I'm the, I'm the kind of guy that's like, if they tell me to like eat shit, it's the best I'm going to get shredded eating shit. 
I would. Yeah. <laughs> time to time to fucking figure out a way to chew on that turd, you know. <laughs> I would <even> do it. <laughs> hey, John. No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> you know. So I was I was fortunate enough to have a guy that was experienced enough to kind of yeah. guide me right where. That that's what a big yeah. brother is for, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you you did a lot of training with uh, with Flex Lewis. Talk to us about that. That had yeah, a great so, experience as well. So I had uh, moved out here again on a whim. I remember being in Dominican Republic, and Victor and I had uh, we had just finished our competition, the Dominican the DR coat of arms, Dominican Republic coat of arms, and uh, it was a great show. We had a good time, but. Uh, I had spent a few days by myself just getting some of the business side of the show done. And I realized, man, I feel really good. So that's what like keep me off. I'm like, all right, I'm, I, I'm away from everyone. This is what I need more of. That separation uh, from that tough spot where everybody right. was asking what's going on. It was right. anywhere where, where people weren't asking what was happening. <laughs> yeah. So I, then that's what prompted the conversation to move to Florida. And again, it was within maybe four or five days that I just, I literally threw my, my clothes in a garbage bag and, and drove. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Flex had texted me and was like, hey, is it true you moved to Florida? I said, yeah. This was like maybe a week after I had moved in. And he said, uh, we should get together and train. I said, sure, whenever you want. At that time, I was still kind of, you know, not in a good place. So I, you know, I didn't, I didn't make any hard plans with him. I just said, I left it in his court. I said, you know, whenever you want. Well, sure enough, he texted me the next day. What are you doing? What are you training? Come, come by the gym. So I drove an hour out to Boca from where I was in Miramar and uh, we trained and, you know, I, I was dealing with some things. So I was, you know, angry and pushing and pushing him and he enjoyed it. And he was like, we should train tomorrow. And said, okay, cool. So I came out and it just became a thing. We just started training together every day. And it was a cool experience training with Flex in his gym and seeing the fans come around. And I mean, wow, what a wild experience that was. Like people would literally, yeah. people would literally fly in from fucking, I don't know, across the world and like knock on his door, like, hey, let me in. Like it's a private gym, you know? Uh, yeah. The guy, the guy's extremely popular and and a lot of people love him. So it was cool to experience that with him. It was cool to train with him. I made a great friend there as well. Um, again, an- another another reason for me to really believe that something is looking out for me. Someone. Yeah. Who- it was almost like part of your plan, you know? Why Florida? Well, yeah. there was one of the reasons why, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I promise you, that had nothing to do with it. I just picked Florida because yeah. it was hot. No snow. <laughs> and I think, you know what? <laughs> That's where I want to be. And then it yeah. worked out, you know, it did. Yeah. Sometimes it's, you know, when you don't understand, just, you know, pushing forward and trusting that your plan will unfold for you is all you got. And once it starts to unfold, it really, you it's really easy to see that you're doing things, even though you don't know why you're doing them, you're doing them for the right reason. It sounds like that's exactly what happened to you, brother. Yeah. And I, and I kept, I had to keep reminding myself during the entire, I mean, even, even up until recently, I mean, maybe up until like six, seven months ago, where I just kept telling myself, you know what, this feels really shitty. It feels really uncomfortable. I was building that gym out, working 12, 14 hours a day. I was not eating like a bodybuilder. I was certainly not training like a bodybuilder. I just didn't have the energy building out. I mean, my Mm -hmm. my partner, Sean, and I did all the construction in the gym. We built out the bathroom. Oh, no shit. We did everything. We didn't. We did if you if you go back on my Instagram, you can see I was like on a little on a little um, construction cart, like sh- tearing up the tiles. And mm-hmm. I mean, we we tiled the bathroom. Mm-hmm. We we did everything. Dude, everything. That's crazy. I no, mean, it, that, it was a great experience. Mm-hmm. Great experience. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm just thinking of if you did all the construction. I just built a gym in in my one of my outbuildings, and it, it was maybe 800 square feet and i laid the, the you know the the floor and you know the squares yeah. oh, dude i was fucking wrecked i was like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i was like i mean i my posterior chain was so jacked up from getting up and down off the floor oh, yeah. i was like my knees were shot i was like like oh my god so i can only imagine, imagine doing now, the construction 
twenty-five thousand square feet of it. It was oh mm. god. <laughs> yeah. So wow. you know, I was I was certainly not trained like a bodybuilder, and, and but man, it, it feels good to be back. It feels good to be getting under some weight. And like the other day, I was squatting five plates, and I was like, man, this this feels really fucking good to be back. You know? <laughs> That's killer, bro. Oh. That's that is that when you when you put that on your shoulders and you take a step and you're like, the next step's gonna feel better. Is that's like the best feeling in the world? Yeah. You know that oh, every man. movement is just feeling you're going deeper into your groove. That's a great feeling. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I've been hack squatting crazy weight. It just mentally for me, it's something that I needed. Uh, you know, I told my girl the other day. I said, you know, I, I've been putting everything off. I mean, I've been putting bodybuilding off to to focus on everything else, and I just mm-hmm. felt more anxious, more stressed, more. And I remember just going into the gym and like fucking destroying myself. I just mm-hmm. wanted to let it all out, mm-hmm. and yeah. I had a crazy back workout. This was a few weeks back, maybe like a month ago. And I came home and I was just destroyed. Best night of sleep I've had in years. But then the next day, I woke up and I felt good, and I was looking yeah. forward to the yeah. gym. And I was, yeah, that's a oh, good man. feeling. Yeah, and and then I was like, okay, in my mind, I was like, I'm ready. I'm yeah. ready to give this 100 percent now. Yeah, mm-hmm. fuck everything else. If it all falls and burns, I don't fucking care. I need bodybuilding. I need it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So man, I'm I'm fucking pumped for the 2022 season. <laughs> yeah, and bodybuilding is it's you know when you when the the rest of your life is somewhat sorted out it's so much easier to truly focus on what you're trying to do and you have in your new, your new gym in place, you know, you just got this smooth sailing ahead of you and all you want to do is, is, you know, just be the best you could be. That's the great, it's a great place, brother. Congratulations. The, the, The hard thing for me, I think throughout my entire career was I'm a very selfless person. I can't be selfish. It's just not in my, not in my genetic makeup. Um, you know, I, honestly, if I'm training and you need a shirt, I'll take it off my back. Here you go. Like, I, that's just the way that I am. Like, I don't, I'll give everything to anyone. So mm-hmm. it's, it's really taken a lot out of me to put myself first. And like I said, part of that transition, if mm-hmm. I was still in New York, I would have never been able to be where I'm at right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. My brother, I mean, what when you when when we first met, it was in the MHP booth, and I remember shaking your hand and saying hello, and I remember thinking, man, that is a genuine dude, because you can feel the difference between someone that actually is saying hello and someone that's just kind of doing their job, you know. Right. And right. I, I remember that right away. You know, you could there, you you are like I was in the beginning. I mean, you're one of the nicest human beings I've ever met, you know, and you can feel that, you know. Thank you. So, you know, if I was in New York, I would never have had the opportunities that I have now mentally, right? Mm-hmm. I, I really learned that sometimes it's okay to say no. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's okay to put yourself first. First, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes you need to. Yes. Yeah. And the, yeah. First step, the first step in that was me moving, right? That was mm-hmm. the yeah. first. You yeah. guys both know me. Maybe the, some of the viewers don't. I'm an extremely close person to my family. Mm-hmm. Extremely close. We we were always together. I mean, fuck, my dad is like my right hand man. He's with me everywhere I go. Mm-hmm. You know? That's the next question. I wanted you to talk about the relationship with your dad because I'll tell you, brother, I I have such an envy for the relationship you have with dad. Train him from the time you were young. I mean, my dad started me lifting weights. You know, I was real young, but he trained with me. Funny enough. One time, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you do it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, and it was and it was definitely a do as I say, not as I do type session. Oh, you know, right. uh, <laughs> so when I hear you talk about you know lifting weights with your dad, and there was a you know literally equipment in the living room, and you're training with your dad, I was like, oh my god, you know this was. You know, I was given some cool toy to get the fuck out of the house, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so when I, 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 I want to hear it, brother. I, I personally can't wait to hear how, you know, what that's like to have that with your dad, you know? So I'll get to that quickly. You know, moving here did give me the ability to say, it was the first time in my life that I was able to say, okay, I need to do this for me. I need to even though what was happening, receiving all that love and that care wasn't allowing me to move forward. So I did take that first step and said, you know what? I'm moving. 
mm-hmm. for myself. And that allowed me to then continue making steps for myself moving yeah. forward and recognize that, you know what, I'm not a bad person for no. me saying no sometimes or, or putting yeah. myself first sometimes. Taking care yeah. of yourself. Yeah. 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 And it was, it was so necessary at that point in my life. I, again, I keep alluding to it. I had some really dark times, man. I, I'm not a suicidal person at all, but I really did start to think about like, you know, is this really what life is about? Like feeling, yeah. you know, giving, giving everything to someone and then just shitting on you and not caring about you. Um, mm-hmm. You know, your career, like I, I was, I remember being pulled aside and I'm not mentioning any names, but you know, at a certain show, I did not do very well at all. And the judges were like, Hey, uh, you need to stop. <laughs> and for me, like hearing that was like, Holy fuck. Like mm-hmm. it's that visible, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. meanwhile, I'm, I'm on stage, like pretending like I'm okay. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, it was, it was so necessary for me to do that. And I think it's really important for some of the well, brother, you were still beating me during that time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure how or why, but <laughs> but yeah, it was oh. it was rough. It was a rough go. And then back to my dad. Um, that story is just incredible. My dad has been a, a huge inspiration in my life. Go ahead, John. Yeah. I was going to say I, I sincerely apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt you in the middle of you were being real soulful, and I didn't catch uh-huh. that. I mean, the, the best part about this show is that you're speaking from the heart. So I just want to say I wasn't trying to change the subject when you were on a roll there because I I can't tell you how appreciative I am that you're being open and honest because this is really cool, soulful stuff, brother. No, no, it's my job. Like I said, if I'm not being honest, I'm not doing right, you know, and I have to do right by people and, you know, by the opportunity that I have. So, um, yeah, my my relationship with my dad is, is really unique. Um, obviously it's, it's really, really cool to have someone, um, and I only recently started talking about when it was that my dad and I really like connected. Mm -hmm. Um, my dad was taken from us when I was about eight years old, almost eight years old. Mm -hmm. He spent a few years in prison. Um, before that we would always look at magazines together and so on and so forth. And, um, yeah, when he went to prison, my mom would take us up there and, you know, we'd look at magazines and talk about bodybuilding and whatever. And, you know, um, we really started to connect um, during that time. And, and when he came home, I remember just being excited because, yeah, before he went, I remember he had, a, you know, a, a adjustable bench with a, with a cage that he would Right in the living room, yeah. He would like oh, pull it like, out the side, like people are oh, watching the TV. Best. Like, look at <laughs> <laughs> the TV's not important, <laughs> shit, you know. My mom's like, What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, we, we don't need to watch Wheel of Fortune. I must trade, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it started, you know. It's fucking Dude, that awesome. is so like, awesome. Yeah, we didn't I love have that. much. We didn't have much, but man, those those. But you had what mattered, man. That's what yeah, it was all yeah. about. Yeah. Fuck, yeah, man. Man. it was it was awesome. Man. That is fucking. I shit. remember my dad like, oh, they were horrible. The metric shakes, the the first like, <laughs> first, <laughs> first, like shit. My dad was like, drink it, it's gonna get you big. So I'm like, they're chugging it as a little kid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I did it, you know. So yeah, I mean, it was really cool. And then when he came back, I was about you know. 14 uh almost 15 and from there on we trained every day every day together i did not want to miss a beat i I've, i valued his presence in my life that's number you one you referred to him as your best friend quite a lot yeah yes he he's my best friend there's that's nothing that fucking so life. cool man there's nothing that, that is so cool life that my dad does not know about i mean he knows about literally everything yeah. so i mean literally everything that's a blessing brother you know yeah, yeah. he's uh you know, the thing is, I realized really early on in my life that there's no one singular person in this world that's going to care more about you than your own parents. Yeah. And if they, if they don't, you got a pretty fucked up parents. But, but oh, your brother, parents, yeah, on, on that, I've been fighting for my dad's attention for fucking 50 years, and I'm still not getting the job done. You know, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> well, maybe it's not through bodybuilding. Maybe you gotta you gotta connect on something or some other. I level. mean, it, I know I totally with you. I might see. I just, see I just, I just, I look at you and I think that's the most special thing ever, brother. That's so I cool. You. And I hear that a lot, and it's such a it's such a cool thing to be able to share with people. I uh-huh. again, I want to be able to have that experience with my kids. You know, I want to be able to let my kids know because look, my dad can't travel outside of the country but he's been to every show in the country every that's show awesome. like he won't, he awesome. won't miss you know he's he's there he's got my back 100 percent. i remember there's a video actually still out on youtube um of the i think it's the 2018 olympia mm-hmm. and there's thousands of people in there and you can hear my dad Screaming his nuts off! Like, oh, that is <laughs> awesome, dude. Yeah, I'm just like, that is awesome, fuck? man. Are you picking up my dad's voice? You know, it's, but he's he loses his voice. He won't talk yeah. for a week because he's just done. Yeah. But uh, man, what an experience to have a, a father like that. And I don't. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things that you guys on the exterior you see a dad who's supportive and who's uh, who's been my best friend, but. You know, my dad has had a lot of a lot of things happen in his life that, like, I really admire him for. You know, he's never, you know, he went to jail and, and you know, he, he had to pay for some things that he did. And, um, but dude, when I tell you, my dad never let him let it get it down. He just mm-hmm. said, "No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it on the chin, and I'm gonna, you know, smile about it. I'm alive. I'm okay." That, and, and that, that's, that's the way that, you got to do that, it. And that's one thing I could attest to for his dad. He's always yeah. smiling. He's always a happy person. Yeah, he's you know? got he's yeah. got he's got such a great outlook on life. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I leaned on that a lot when I was going yeah. through my divorce. I, I I needed to see that no matter what's going on in my dad's life, mm-hmm. he was gonna be okay. He believed he was gonna be okay. Yeah. Um, you know, a little bit of a Debbie Downer. I don't want to talk about it too much, but like. My dad's brother committed suicide last year, last November. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about that, brother. Thank you. It was a it was a rough time for my family, but when that happened, I was really concerned about my dad because my dad is also, as Akeem mm-hmm. alluded to, one of those men who are just like never going to show you how he feels. He'll show you he's mm-hmm. happy, mm-hmm. but he'll never cry in front of you. And that's kind of why I took after my mother. My father wasn't present when i was developing those things so my mom Mm -hmm. told me hey it's okay tell me what's wrong and i learned how to do that way Mm -hmm. my father didn't have that same experience and i was really really concerned about him and i remember him turning around and said hey you know what john i'm um i'm okay i'm gonna be okay Mm -hmm. you know what sal did was stupid you know he 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 didn't know how to deal with what happened Mm-hmm. And I wish you would have talked to me more, but we can't, we can't sit and wallow in it. Mm-hmm. All, I have, all I'm going to do is cherish the moments I had with him. And to me, That's that powerful was powerful stuff, man. That's yeah, powerful and, stuff right there. Yeah. To me, that was such a profound moment. Cause I was like, yeah. man, instead of yeah. like feeling self pity and, and all this hurt and pain, which is useless really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He just, he turned it around and was like, hey, you know what? Like, yeah, it sucks. He's gone. But I'd rather think of all the good times. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, man, that's so fucking true. You know, like, yeah. I, wish, I wish I was that strong of an individual. Like, after losing your brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, to, to have the, the clarity to say, you know what? I'm not going to think about how fucked up this is. I'm going to think about how great my time with my brother was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to give you that direction at that at that time was you know, very insightful too. I mean, that's yeah. a that's a wise man right there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's my dad. I, I would I'm, I would say it. I'm fucking lucky to have had the <laughs> father that I have and the best friend. Oh, brother! I mean, I envy your stories about stuff, what you talked about with him. There's some stuff that I can tell you maybe off camera because of. <laughs> <laughs> My my birds my birds and the bees talk was quite funny. <laughs> I tell you, my dad's my best friend. He's he's my best friend. <laughs> I'm I'm sure, I'm sure he didn't spare any details. Uh, <laughs> he probably gave, he probably uh, gave me the real expensive bee talk. Oh yeah, everybody oh, gonna have a hand. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
I'll just say, I'll just say, I was very prepared. Yeah. <laughs> He went in there like a professional. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, he was, he was, if he wasn't going to do his job, he was going to do it well. So, oh, he, yeah. you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. Well, that's yeah. awesome. That's, that's really cool. Like I said, when, you know, I've ever heard you talk about your dad, I thought, man, that is so cool. You know, yeah. so I'm like I said, I envy you, bro. That's really, really cool stuff. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I think also John is one of the few competitors that I could actually say he shared a stage with, shared a stage with his dad too, right? Yeah. Very few people have done it. Ever done wow, that. that's wicked. We competed mm -hmm. times together, and it was always yeah. a, always such a fun experience training with him. My yeah. dad, like, he he wants to get ready for a show now, um, but he's just like he's always so like. I remember him getting ready. He's like, "Man, I'm just happy to be on stage." I'm like, God, "I'm I'm super competitive." I'm like, "No, I want to fucking win." He went, uh, "Yeah, he's just happy to be on stage." My dad's like, "Bro, we're gonna get pancakes after this. It's all right." <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he looks the he, you. He looks great. I mean, clearly, he passed down some wicked genetics to you, and you can yeah. see a lot of similarities in your physiques. Yeah, yeah, he's sixty. He's sixty years old, man, and still kicking ass. Yeah. Is he sixty? Is he sixty yeah. years old? Oh my 60. god, I would. Yeah, he, he, he don't. Christ. He don't look nothing like sixty, man. I no, saw him just the other day. I mean, me and him was talking because Victor was actually trying to get him to get on stage again. Oh and yeah. After 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 Victor walked off, me and him started talking, and he was telling me like, "Man, I'm an old man right now, man." And I'm like, "What are you talking about? Look at your legs." I said, like, yeah. "Old man, look at all my legs." <laughs> He's I'm still like, got legs. Got, yeah, I'm like, once you got legs, you can compete. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Hey, John, did you know in 2007, myself, Marco, I believe Juan Morel, and my dad competed in that light heavy class. Oh, no shit. 40, I think it was 49 guys. Mm. Jesus I Christ, that's second. big. I placed second. Mm -hmm. My dad placed seventh. Mm -hmm. No Juan, shit. Juan placed ninth. And I think Marco placed like 13th or something like that. 12th. Well, he, 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 wow. he beat both Juan and, he beat both Juan <laughs> Juan and Marco. <laughs> Dude, that is that is crazy right there. That's <laughs> right crazy. I mean, you're talking about some guys that did real damage in the oh, industry yeah. and on the yeah. Olympia stage. And he, he put a whooping to him. That's beautiful yeah. stuff right there. That's, <laughs> that's timeless. Time. That's timeless, brother. I love it. Yeah. Well, we, I, uh, he has the pictures hanging up in his bedroom, man. <laughs> yeah, I would too if I was in that phone. That's, that's good stuff. Oh, man. So would you say he's your biggest inspiration or did somebody else wear that hat? No, my dad is definitely my biggest one. I mean, my dad, again... I think I think in order for somebody to truly inspire you, you need to see the faults in them as well, right? And, mm -hmm. and obviously, like I said, my dad did some things that, like, you know, he he paid the price for. It. He did his time, and, and unfortunately, his family was affected by it. But I think in the way that my father redeemed himself and continues to redeem himself as a man, as a as a husband, as a father. I, I can't really like I don't I, mean, I can't think of anyone else that might be a better suited you know. I mean, role. everybody makes mistakes. It's how you handle your mistakes that defines your character. Exactly, you know. Exactly. And my dad could have came home and continued doing the dumb, the same dumb shit, got in trouble again, and went away again. And but my dad saw how it affected all of us. You know, we had. Mm -hmm sleepless nights and nights where we were worried about where we're getting food from and how we're going to have a roof over our head. I mean, it was, it was a really fucked up time. Um, so it was going to be far more fun to be lifting weights in the living room, blocking people watching TV, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So you know, instead, of, instead of coming back home and, you know, doing the same old shit, he said, no, I, I'm going to, I'm going to get it together. And I'm going to yeah. be a father and I'm going to be a good provider and I'm going to be a good husband and I'm going to take care I'm going to take my family out of this ghetto ass place and move them into a nicer place so they have an opportunity to be to have a better life so yeah when I say my dad's my biggest inspiration I mean it like he's a great father he was a good husband he's you know just a good man like I said the way he carries himself the way he cares about others mm -hmm. you know I just think he's again I, I'm blessed to have a, a really great um 
inspiration in him. Mm-hmm. That's really but cool. I, but I have that. I have that in so many of my friends too. Akeem, Victor. Again, I mean, Victor's Victor's a wild right. fucking dude. But when I tell you <laughs> the dude's a great, great father. Uh huh. <clears throat> You know, he he he's a great father. He's a great friend, you know, and an incredible bodybuilder. So I have I have inspiration all over. You know, look at what Juan is doing. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I got yeah. some I got some really really great people around me, and I'm super 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 grateful for them. Well, brother, you you attract people much like yourself, and it's very very clear listening to you talk. You know, <laughs> thank you, absolutely, thank you. absolutely. So. <clears throat> If you could jump in a time machine, right, yeah. and you could go back in time and talk to yourself, how far would you go back, and what would you, what piece of advice would you give yourself? You could give yourself one piece of advice. You get me emotional here, <laughs> <laughs> bro. This whole this whole episode's been emotional. I can't thank yeah. you enough for the cool shit. These are pearl, you're you're dumping pearls on the world here, brother. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I think. Um... I think I'd probably go back to that seven-year-old boy. Yeah. Yeah, I probably tell him that everything's gonna be okay. Yeah. Uh, because uh, that that moment in my life changed a lot. It uh, it instilled a lot of fear and worry and, and doubt. And um, it all worked out. I'm okay. So. But it was a lot of years of struggle mentally. It was a lot of years of, of fear and uh, doubt. And like I said, I always say it, man. I'm, I'm so grateful for the life that I've lived. I've traveled the world. I've made money doing something that I love. I've had a great support system. But, um, you know, watching your hero being taken away from you is, is yeah. uh, you know, at that age, you know. Yeah. If I was a little bit older... You know, at that age, you're being taught like the bad guy, bad guys go to jail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I had this like affliction in my own head. Like, wait a second, this is my dad. He's like the best guy in the world. Yeah. And they're like carting him off. I'm like, what the fuck, you know? Yeah. So I had so much going on. And I see my mom crying in the middle of the night, working three, four jobs, just trying to put food on the table. It was just, it was a lot for a young kid to, to deal with. And yeah. I think the lasting effects of that, um, up until recently, honestly, um, were damaging. You know, I, I, I get into these zones where mentally where I'm like, I got to make money. 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 And I, and I don't ever want to go back to that struggle. Mm-hmm. That I felt. Yeah. yeah. So, and, that, and again, sometimes that could be damaging. Me living in Florida for four years all by myself, you know, was is a sign of that. Um, but again, like, I think some of those experiences are useful. Then I, I would never take it away. I would just tell that kid, you know, myself as a young boy, like, hey, you know what? There are going to be some times that really fucking suck. And there's going to be some times that you're going to question yourself and, and why you're going through the things you're going through. But everything's going to be okay. That's it. Yeah. Brother, that's that's that, that's really. I mean, that's good shit right there. That that, you know? that, was, that, was, that was really deep, bro. That, yeah, that was deep. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when you talked about getting emotional, hell, you had me coming right on the bus with you. You know, I mean, that's because <laughs> I fought it back. You know, I fought it back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because you literally, you know, you what you said you went back to that seven year old boy. And obviously, you just got done talking about your dad being your inspiration or your hero, and you had to watch this whole thing unfold and. That's again, brother, you know, really good stuff. I mean, this, this is going to be so helpful for, for people to listen to and watch him. You know, you're a, you know, you're, you're a pillar of the industry and for people to see behind the scenes and that you go through the struggles and as a person, you grow from the tough times. And really what it comes down to is like you said earlier, uh, you really don't get more put in front of you than what you can handle. You just don't know it at the time. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm, that's, that's, that's good stuff, brother. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like I said, it, in those moments, it's hard to you know see the lesson in things. It's hard to understand why you're going through things. But uh, you know, I think it's really important to kind of remove yourself from the situation sometimes a little bit 
um, still feel, still, you know, try to manage those emotions. But I think it's a, mm -hmm. a little bit important to detach yourself a little bit from the situation and, and understand that, hey, you know what, as much as this really sucks or as, as great, and e even on the opposite end, maybe you're going through a really great time. Yeah. I think it's still important to detach and know that this isn't going to last forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, even on the, at the highest peak, you're, it's never going to last forever. I might be, I pray that I might be one of the best bodybuilders in the world, right? Like truly at the Olympia level, placing top two or three. I hope one day I can reach that. But I also have to know that it's not going to last forever. Mm -hmm. Just like during bad times, it might really fucking suck at that moment. But I also have to know it's not going to last forever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's very that's true. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the good times, you want them to last, but they only stay so long. And the tough times are around the corner because it's, you know, if you don't have those tough times, you don't really understand how to feel those good ones. Right. Right. And that, that's kind of, uh, you know, tying it all in. Yeah. My uncle was at a very high point in his life. My uncle and my dad, they, they shared a, a really great business and, and, uh, and an account in Forex and trading. They were doing really, really good. And my uncle ended up losing all the money. So, you know, I think he thought it was going to ride out for the rest of his life and he was going to continue making tons of money and it didn't happen that way and he couldn't deal with it. Mm. So that's, that's the lesson that I took from that. It's like, okay, well, you know, even though things may be going good, it is not always going to be that. Yeah. Good. You want things to be good, but you don't want you know, yeah. things to be great, you know? Yeah. So just like I said, just like the bad times, sometimes you're going to go through some shit, but, yeah, you know, it's it's almost like a pendulum. That crazy high is always going to be met by a crazy low. You know, they they don't exist without each other. That's right. That's absolutely right. So yeah. So when you're when you got when you're riding high, you you know to strap up that that seatbelt because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I think I, I think I, a lot of mistake that a lot of people make is when they are that high, you know, they don't even take time to enjoy it. That yeah, they just want to keep thing. chasing. Yeah. You know, they want to keep chasing more and more and more and more. And then when it's gone, that's when you you, you get depressed and everything gets to realize what you really had. Yeah, yeah, know? absolutely. That's another mm -hmm. great point. A lot of guys, yeah. a lot of guys, saying, you know, it's like, you know, not meshing any knees, but it's like a flash in the pan. They they had all this crazy yeah. success and then boom, it's all gone. You know, yeah. And, and yeah. Left, Rather left. than smelling the roses that you got, you you just want more. <laughs> <laughs> and then it turns into a cycle you can't stop and next thing you know you're looking you're at the bottom looking up going how the hell did i go from up there to down here but hell that's yeah. that's where the that's where the character's built at the bottom yeah. not the top yeah you know? mm -hmm. so how are you guys doing I, I enough about me let's how are you guys <laughs> well brother i gotta say to you i gotta say one more time brother you, this is you you really are dropping some pearls here i mean there, there are gonna be so many people listen to this that are going to be inspired and helped and uh, again man i i just got it takes a strong person to come and, and talk openly and brother i i me personally, I just want to say thank you again. This has been great for me. Just listening to you talk, I can only well, imagine I, what the what the people listening are going to think too. I really appreciate that. I mean, uh, like I said, coming from a, from a peer in this industry, and you know, obviously somebody has been through their own things. It's cool to hear that you're you're respectful of the fact that I'm I am me, and that this is going to be me, and I'm I'm trying to do good, and you're you're acknowledging that. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Yeah, <clears throat> so uh, kind of a nice change of gears to lighten things up a little bit. So yeah. <clears throat> you actually went through uh, a surgery, which I'm going to have to actually do myself. And obviously, you stayed awake for your abdominal surgery, right, right. for your hernia. Yeah. I want to do the same thing because when I get put under, it seems like a, there's always some complication. I just turned 50. I don't want to go under the guy. I want to stay awake. So yeah. tell me, was it was that, tell a, tell everybody what that was like to watch okay. them cut your stomach open and then uh, you know, give me some confidence to do the same thing. <laughs> okay. you know, I will start off by saying if you're queasy, don't do it. If you're queasy, <laughs> no, 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 okay. don't do it. Um, I, I walked in there. So just to give a quick story, I had just won 
the Toronto Pro Show. I won the Puerto Rico Pro, Toronto Pro right after. I had about roughly five weeks between preps. I was going to get ready for the Olympia. So I remember landing here in Florida and um, I had this, this surgery that, well, I wasn't scheduled, but I, I knew I had a, a hernia and it was only going to get worse. So I remember reaching out to the doctor down in Miami. He does cosmetic stuff. And um, I asked him if he could do it. He said, absolutely not. So I moved on. I found another doctor. I told him, look, I don't have time. Because the way they try to do it is you got to get blood done. You got to get labs done. They, they look at the labs. They make sure you're okay. Yeah. And you got to do this cleanse. Yeah, I mean, when they put you to sleep, are you going to are you gonna wake up, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, did, I didn't want to go through, like, getting yeah. labs done. I didn't have the time. I needed time. to get the surgery done. Yeah. And then recover and then get back to my training almost immediately. Yeah. So I finally found this doctor. Um, he was great. Um, I told him, look, I, I have an umbilical, umbilical hernia. Um, I need you to look at it. And if you can, I'd like to go on. I'd like to, you know, have the surgery, but I'm not going to go under. I would like to do it under local anesthetic. And the guy literally turned to me and goes, you're a crazy motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, why? He goes, do you really want to see what happens? I said, dude, I don't care. I need to get to the Olympia. And for yeah. him, it was like, Oh, you compete at the Olympia. Then he started showing me pictures of Rich Gaspari and he's a fan of the sport. So I was like, yeah, dude, I'm getting ready for the Olympia. Like, I don't have time. I need to like, so he was on board. Um, the crazier part about it is I, I also had a gynecomastia surgery too. I didn't never had gyno. I had like little s swelling and stuff, but it would always go away. So we did that at the same time. A lot of people, I've never said that openly, but he did that probably the best gyno surgery I've ever seen. I have nothing at all. He took the glands out. Um, and then he started to do my umbilical hernia. And he goes, okay, you're getting ready. I'm going to cut open. I said, sure, go ahead. Cuts open. He's Everything's So good. real quick, you stay awake for two different surgeries. Two, two different nipples surgeries. and, a, and a, an umbilical. Oh, yeah. Jesus. And the story gets much better here. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Um, so... By the way, if anyone wants the, this doctor, he's phenomenal. He made a, an incision. I don't know if you can see it, but you can't even see it under my, it's not even under my areola, which is the darker skin. He did it under like my nipple, like a really small little nick and cleaned everything out. Fucking phenomenal. Wow. Um, yeah, what they're doing today is crazy. Then he moved to my umbilical hernia. He starts to cut it open. He goes, everything good? I said, I'm okay. So I'm actually watching a, Maybe some of your viewers know I went to school for nursing. So I was a little bit intrigued at what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, so the umbilical, the umbilicus, which is the tube that is cut right from your mother. Yeah. Mine was completely loose and floating around in there. That's what would oh, cause, geez. that's what would cause the protrusion. Whenever I would eat, there would be food in my stomach and the, the umbilicus would protrude out outward. So it was just like floating around in there. This is when I lost my shit. He grabbed it. <laughs> he grabbed it and pulled it out. <laughs> so, man, it's fucked up. Oh, Jesus. So now yeah. like, I, he had a mirror set up for me because I was watching. Like I was intrigued. And now I can see like my intestines and shit. I lost it. I was like, oh, doc, I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> 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 but he give you he had to give you some sort of a set and he gave some value or something. He gave me a value. So I'm like sitting there, I'm like, okay, oh okay. And he <laughs> it was literally all of maybe 40 minutes. He put it back in, wow. stitched, it, stitched it in place, and then closed everything up. Could you feel anything or you didn't really feel oh, anything with local? I felt tugging and, and pulling, but no pain. No pain at yeah. all. Um so other than visually seeing like what was inside of me. I was okay. It wasn't too bad. Yeah, I'm gonna opt to avoid the mirror. I, I won't. Let, I, I don't want to see it happen. I'll just, I'll just look at the ceiling and be quiet. You know, and I'll ask for, I'll ask for the volume ahead of time as well. <laughs> that, would, that would be smart. See, he asked me too, and I said, no, no, I'll be okay. I'm all right. No, you definitely take it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely take it. <laughs> right. Well, that uh, gives me a little confidence to go to to go do what you did. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> I like it.
I like it. So, brother, I got to say, man, this has been like the most fucking amazing, soulful experience having you on the show here. But the question that, that we got to ask you before you go, and you, you because, I mean, you've, you're such a great guy as a person. And you've done so much in the sport. You're when when you're when you're gone. You know what is it that John De La Rosa is going to be remembered for? What is your legacy? What what's the most important to you? Because you're going to remember for a lot of things. What's the most important to you? So you know, it's funny you ask this. I'm sure you're a little bit older than I am, or Akeem and I. And and I've Akeem, maybe you're you're going through the same things. I don't know, but. I'm, I'm, I'm at a point in my life where I really have thought about that a lot. Like, okay, what, what am I, what am I known for? What do I want to be known for? What's my mm-hmm. legacy? Um, and yeah, the businesses are great and, you know, having muscles great. And, but I've been thinking like none of that truly means anything in this world. Like, it, yeah, you know, it, that's, that's selfish shit. You know, it's yeah. like, mm-hmm. I, have, I have abs and, and big arms, big fucking deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sorry to every other person that cares about like how that cares that much about how they look. I'm just not that person. Um, so in, in conclusion, what I've really thought about is what I want to be known for is, and I said this uh, not too long ago, I just want to be loved for, for being love. You know what I mean? For, for being a source of love. Yeah. You know, I want, yeah. I want people to know that, like, hey, you know what? John was always helpful. John was always caring. John was always a good person. John was always looking out for other people. Um, just just a good addition to humanity. That's it. Yeah. I want to yeah. be, I want to do good while I'm here on this earth. That doesn't <laughs> necessarily be mean being a Mr. Olympia, right? That's, that's selfish. That's for me. And although I do Mm -hmm. want to accomplish that, I don't Mm -hmm. want people around me to know me as Mr. Olympia. I want Mm -hmm. people to know me as, Hey, that's a really great fucking guy. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, It's like, Hey, this John was a great guy. And Oh, guess what? He was a great bodybuilder also not the reverse. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Well, well, brother, I got to tell you, you know, I mean, like I said, the first time, you know, we were working on that booth together and we got introduced I had immediately, immediately about that, man, that is a, that dude is, he's a sincere dude. So I got to tell you, brother, you're, I think you are probably a lot further on your way to leaving that behind than you know, just because, you know, just at a handshake, people can understand how just a good human being you are. And unfortunately, I think the world is running short on those, you know, (laughs) so, you know, (laughs) just a great human being is great. You, you, you mean the, the, the bodybuilding industry? <laughs> there's not, there's not a lot is, of those I, going around. Which is why I feel all the more importance should, I, I should be that. I, I need mm-hmm. to be that. Yeah, I need yeah. to show people that like, look, yeah, I'm a big, strong guy, but that's not all of me. There's yeah, more, yeah. and you can be more. And although, yes, mm-hmm. I understand when you're prepping, you need to have your cardio, you need to do your training, you need to have your... You can mm-hmm. still be good. You can still yeah. be a good person. You can still smile. Yeah. I tell everyone, like, you know, now owning the gym, I have people coming from all over, and they're like, oh, I can't believe you're here working. I'm like, oh, I, I need to work. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, like, blown away by it. And, and it's huh. like, it, you know, it's funny to me because people think that just because I'm a big guy, like, that's all there is to me. And, and Yeah, totally. Like, then they start to talk to me and they're kind of like, like oh, whoa. John's a really cool yeah. dude. Yeah. He's yeah. a real person. No. Yeah. And then I, yeah. and then I explain to them like, guys, like it, this isn't just the exterior isn't who I am. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. It's not all I want to be. There's, there's so mm-hmm. much more yeah. to the life. There's, you know, my girl really quick, my girl the other day and I were talking and, and again, this has been a topic of discussion for us. And, you know, I told her like, I want to be a good father. I want to be a good provider. I want to be a good human. Like I just, everything that I do, like I said, I just want to be a source of love for people and for people to know that like, Hey, you know what? Even though there's some really shitty people out there that are looking Mm -hmm. to harm, that are looking not at your best interest. And there are people that are looking for your best. I have, 
I have nothing to gain from texting Akeem when he's getting ready to get on stage, except that I love him and I'm mm-hmm. really yeah. like fucking glued to the yeah. TV, yeah. like cheering him on like a psychopath. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Akeem, am I not right? I, don't I? Totally. I'm so fucking. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah. that's the thing. It's like absolutely, it, it costs me nothing to tell my brother, "Hey, I love you, man. I'm proud of you." Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I yeah. think people get so caught up in their own shit. Yes. For them yeah. To the world gets moving too fast. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then you know, the other the other thing is that people are always looking for ulterior motives, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Again, I don't gain anything from sending my boy, "Hey, dude, I love mm-hmm. you. How do you go mm-hmm. fuck off your ass?" And, and you know what I think people miss is that it it feels good to tell somebody that you love that you love them. It feels good, and I think people kind of forget that. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and it's well, you know, know I tell people all the time, listen, man, don't be afraid to tell the people you love you love them because it's not just for them; it's it's for you. It's that relationship that's being built, and with our world going so goddamn fast, people are going to lose touch with actually connecting. You know. Yeah. It's funny though. There's there are some people. I tell all my boys I love them. I don't care how they feel about it. I, yeah. I don't care if they get awkward about it. Victor's the. Victor's <laughs> the guy, like I'll text him or we'll be on the phone. I'm like, hey, all right, I love you, bro. I'll catch you later. He's like, uh, all right, bye. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what though? Uh-huh. But, but I'm still going to tell him I love him, and, and it is yeah. so. This may sound a little bit morbid, but the truth is we never know when we're going to go. Yeah. Yeah. We never know when our last moments are. We never know when our last breath is. Mm -hmm. So if I can, again, make use of the time that I have and make people know or let people know that, hey, I love you. I care about you. You're on my mind. If that helps them have a better day, if it helps them feel loved, if it helps them get through their day, I'm doing good. Again, that's, that's the whole point of this. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, brother, you know, you want to be room for being a, a good human being. You know, that was part of my introduction. So, like I said, you're 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 putting the whooping on that legacy already, man. And I can't th- I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. You know, oh, we're not got- done. We're not done oh. with bodybuilding yet. We oh, still got, we still got bodybuilding. To, I still got some scores to settle in bodybuilding. Absolutely. <laughs> but that, but, I know, uh, but, I know you but, do, man. And you, you're going to make it happen. I know you That's are. Right. <laughs> oh, brother, you're, you're just getting your wheels turning because if, if you look at life cycle, it's always after that really challenging time. That's when the best comes. So you're, you, even in the way you talk, you're, you're in position. You're looking forward to what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, the new heights for you are, are coming because you just finished with one of, the, one of the toughest challenges. And, you know, it's just the way it's the life cycle, you know. Yeah. Your, your trajectory is going up. Yeah. You know, the question is, how high is it going to happen in this cycle? Because, yeah. unfortunately, the cycle will happen again. Another challenge will hit you, and you'll rise, up, you'll rise above it, and the cycle will go again. Yeah. How many cycles can a person deal with before they, you know, they, they re, they're, they're going to get to the peak? You just got to stick out those cycles. Right. And, brother, I believe in you. Just, I'm excited just, to watch just this know thing that The next time you get to the peak, you better plant the damn flag up there. <laughs> let, people, let people know you've been there, man. Like you did, you, know? like you did last year, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, I love let it. Know you've been there. Yeah, I love it. I'm gonna put my right yeah. to yours. Yeah, plan yeah. that shit, man. I love it. I love it. Uh, that's hey, really cool. Just before we get off here, I want I want to say this publicly, team. I'm so fucking proud of you, dude. I remember I show people this video of us all the time when we're squatting when we we're squatting those seven plates. Yeah, you yeah. That? In synergy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I said, I'm like, wait, wait till the end of the video. Wait till the end of the video. And then they see me like, <laughs> is that a king? <laughs> a king was a skinny little man. A king, I'm so fucking proud of you, man. I'm, uh, I'm just blown away at your success and what you've been able to accomplish and with your physique. And yeah. Dude. Thank you, bro. Congrats, and I say the same thing for you. I'm always proud of you. And I, I know you're, you're one of the best and you're going to, you know, Definitely get back on stage and prove to everybody that you're one of the best to do it out in New York. And, you know, oh, yeah. just, just, just want to make sure, just keep your confidence up and, you know, all can't right. wait to start killing the stage with you again, bro. I will. I will. Thank you, brother. brother we, all, we all get to just sit back and watch all this develop because it's your time, my brother. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. 
Thank yeah. you for having me on the show as well. I really of appreciate course, it. Of course, man. Absolutely. Well, everybody, there's a, another really killer, soulful edition of Legends of Iron. We're here to inspire you and make the best of you, help you become the best version of yourself. And listening to our boy here, John De La Rosa, he's laying on the line to help you guys become the best version of yourself, not only in, in physical sense, but emotional and spiritual. And John, I got to thank you so much for your time here, brother. Uh, yeah, thank you once again. That's another edition, everyone. We'll see you next time. Legends of Iron is brought to you by Muscle Mets. Muscle Mets is the creator of Carnivore. Beef built muscle and Carnivore is the world's number one selling beef protein.